Shortly after I arrived in Anderson, Indiana, to pastor Park Place Church, which was many years ago, Dr. Robert Reardon presented me with a book of poems by the great Negro writer James Weldon Johnson, titled God's Trombone. One poem, The Creation, especially struck my fancy. Listen. And God stepped out into space, and he looked around and said, I am lonely. I'll make me a world. And far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything, blacker than a hundred midnights down in a cypress swamp. Then God smiled, and the light broke, and the darkness rolled up on one side, and the light stood shining on the other. And God said, that's good. And God reached out and took the light in his hands, and God rolled the light around in his hands until he made the sun. And he set that sun ablazing in the heavens. And the light that was left from making the sun, God gathered into a shining ball and flung against the darkness, spangling the night with the moon and stars. And down between the darkness and the light, he hurled the world. And God said, that's good. Then God himself stepped down. And the sun was on his right hand, and the moon was on his left, and the stars were clustered about his head, and the earth was under his feet. And God walked, and where he trod, his footsteps hollowed the valleys out and bulged the mountains up. Then he stopped and looked and saw that the earth was hot and barren. So God stepped over to the edge of the world, and he spat out the seven seas. He batted his eyes, and the lightnings flashed. He clapped his hands, and the thunders rolled, and the waters above the earth came down. The cooling waters came down. And then the green grass sprouted, and the little red flowers blossomed. The pine tree pointed his finger to the sky. The oak spread out his arms. The lakes cuddled down in the hollows of the ground, and the rivers ran down to the sea. And God smiled again, and the rainbow appeared and curled itself around his shoulder. And then God raised his arm, and he waved his hand over the sea and over the land, and he said, bring forth, bring forth. And quicker than God could drop his hand, fishes and fowls and beasts and birds swam the rivers and the seas, roamed the forests and the woods, and split the air with their wings. And God said, that's good. Then God walked around and looked on all that he had made. He looked at his sun, and he looked at his moon, and he looked at his little stars. And he looked on his world with all its living things. And God said, I am lonely still. Then God sat down on the side of a hill where he could think. By a deep, wide river he sat down. With his head in his hands, God thought and thought till he thought, I'll make me a man. Up from the bed of the river, God scooped the clay. And by the bank of the river, he kneeled him down. And there the great God Almighty, who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky, who flung the stars to the most far corner of the night, who rounded the earth in the middle of his hand. This great God, like a mammy bending over her baby, kneeled down in the dust, toiling over a lump of clay, till he shaped it in his own image. And then into it he blew the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Amen. Amen. My Father is omnipotent, and that you can't deny. A God of might and miracles, tis written in the sky. It took a miracle to put the stars in place. It took a miracle to hang the world.
greater than the miracle of creation is the miracle of human redemption. None but God can change life for us so completely that old things pass away and everything becomes new. But he can do it. Thank God he can do it. The writer of the letter to Hebrew Christians said of Jesus, Wherefore, he's able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. O oh, thou great God of creation, we magnify thy holy name in all the earth. We bow down in humility and gratitude before thee and before thy holy Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because of the miracle of rebirth which thou hast performed in our hearts. Blessed be thy holy and righteous name forever and ever. It took a miracle to put the stars in place. It took a miracle to hang the world in space. But when he said, thing that can happen to you is for you to be born again. Isn't that right? To have your sins forgiven. To be redeemed and made new through repentance for sin and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Bill Gaither had an experience exactly like this in mind as he wrote one of his latest songs titled At the Foot of the Cross. Listen. I see the cross as the focal point of all history. All that went before pointed toward it, and all which has happened since points back to it. History turns about the cross as a wheel turns on its axle. But the cross is a kind of a repository, too, where the things which hinder spiritual progress can be laid down. Sins, for example. Since our Lord, crucified there, made full atonement for all sin, why should we carry any longer the old load of guilt and condemnation? We can lay down our carnal pride there, too, and any other bad attitude or desire, like a misdirected ambition. Our standard of values always changes at the foot of the cross. I had walked life's path with an easy tread, had followed where comfort and pleasure led. And then, by chance, in a quiet place, I met my master, face to face. With station and rank and wealth for a goal, 
much thought for the body, but none for the soul, I had entered to win in life's mad race when I met my master face to face. I had built my castles and reared them high till their towers had pierced the blue of the sky. I had sworn to rule with an iron mace when I met my master face to face. I met him and knew him and blushed to see that his eyes full of sorrow were fixed on me. And I faltered and fell at his feet that day while my castles vanished and melted away, melted and vanished. And in their place I saw naught else but my master's face. And I cried aloud, Oh, make me meet to follow the marks of thy wounded feet. My thought is now for the souls of men. I've lost my life to find it again, ere since alone in that quiet place, my master and I stood face to face. Well, that's exactly what happens when you stand with head bared and soul humbled at the foot of the cross. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we lay our burdens and cares at thy blessed feet grateful that thou hast invited all who are weary and heavy laden to find rest in thee. Purify our hearts as we stand with bowed heads at the foot of thy cross. We pray humbly through Christ. Amen. Never shall I forget that day when I stood at Calvary, looking upon that hill so like the shape of a skull where was crucified the Son of God for the sins of the world. In my imagination I could see it all, three crosses silhouetted against an angry sky, gray as lead, ominous clouds moving in writhing patterns at great speed. On the center cross hung Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God, Savior of sinners. Suffering now, though, as the Son of Man, suffering as a man suffers. The agony was indescribable as the rough, hand-forged nails bit into quivering flesh. And yet, even in such physical torment, his thoughts were of others. Hanging there, suspended between heaven and earth, he prayed for those who crucified him, saying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Still thoughtful of his mother, he requested the beloved disciple to care for her. His thirst was great, but they gave him no water. The excruciating pain was such that at one point Jesus cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And when the agony had increased until it was beyond human endurance, the Savior said, It is finished, and into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having thus said, life passed from his body. I seemed to see it all as I stood there that day, Roman soldiers leaning wearily upon their spears, 
some of them gambling for the master's seamless robe. The centurion as he suddenly recognized divinity in the one hanging there. The restless crowd, totally unaware that they were crucifying the Lord of glory. There were those who walked back and forth saying, if thou be the son of God, come down from the cross. And the chief priests sneering, he saved others, himself he cannot save. And the two thieves being crucified with him, casting the same in his teeth. And there he died. In the minds of the people, forsaken by God and man, died that he might become our savior. Never was there a more perfect portrayal of the love of God. And it was for me he died, and you. It was for our sins that he suffered. And knowing this, how can we but serve him with our whole heart the rest of our days? Let's sing about it, Doug. Bill Gaither's song, I Have Been to Calvary. I've been to Calvary I can say I've seen the Lord I've been to Calvary Through the witness of His Word Each day at Calvary saw him hanging there, the Son of God. With tear-dimmed eyes I knelt and prayed, and he heard my prayer. Oh, praise the Lord. September of 1963 that I said to Bill Gaither, riding along with Doug and me to an evangelistic meeting in Huntington, Indiana, Bill, I have an idea for a song. I wish you'd write a song which will say, he touched me, oh, he touched me. Well, two weeks later, the song was finished and Doug has been singing it across the nation ever since. Let's hear it, Doug. Shackled by a Just 
touched me. Well, praise God, I am no longer the same. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me. What a song that is. He touched me. Well, the grand thrilling thing is that Christ has touched me. He certainly must have touched Bill Gaither with inspiration as he composed those words and that music. And he's touched Doug a hundred times as he sung it, chiefly because he first touched him with saving grace and the healing of his soul. This song grows on you. Watch out or you'll be singing it all day long. I know. And you'll be singing it when you happen to be awake in the night. And I'll never forget hearing 2,000 or more people in Bridgetown, Barbados sing it for the first time. Oh, it was a thrilling experience. You know, Jesus was always touching someone with healing. Peter's mother-in-law, two blind men, a leper, a man with a palsy. And Hebrews 13, 8 tells us that he's the same yesterday and today and forever. There's power in the touch of the master's hand. By the way, have you ever read the little poem by that name, The Touch of the Master's Hand? It goes like this. "'Twas battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it scarcely worth his while to waste much time on the old violin. But he held it up with a smile. What am I bidding, good folk, he cried. Who'll start the bidding for me? A dollar. A dollar. Then two. Only two? Two dollars. And who'll make it three? Three dollars once. Three dollars twice. Going for three. But no. From the room far back, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. And then, wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening up the loose strings, he played a melody pure and sweet as a caroling angel sings. And the music ceased, and the auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, said, What am I bid for the old violin? And he held it up with the bow. A thousand dollars. And who'll make it two? Two thousand. And who'll make it three? Three thousand once. Three thousand twice. And going. And gone, said he. And the people cheered. But some of them cried, We do not quite understand what changed its worth. Swift came the reply, Twas the touch of a master's hand. Many a man with life out of tune and battered and scarred with sin is auctioned cheap to the thoughtless crowd, much like the old violin. A mess of pottage, a glass of wine, a game, and he travels on. He is going once, going twice. He's going and almost gone. But the master comes. And the foolish crowd never can quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that's wrought by the touch of the master's hand. Do you stand in need of the touch of the master's hand? He can help you. He's the one who said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. And I hear him saying just now, as he said to the two blind men, what will ye that I shall do unto you? 
Are you troubled in heart? Sick in body? Distressed in mind or soul? Let the Master touch you with healing. He's a miracle worker. He forgives sin, lifts condemnation, sets our spirits free. He heals mental illness, too. After Jesus had touched him, they found the former demoniac clothed and in his right mind. And he heals our bodies. I have seen it happen a thousand times. Ask him for what you need, and then leave it all in his loving care, assured that he will do what's best for you. He knows, he loves, he cares. Nothing his truth can dim. He gives his very best to those who leave the choice to him. Shall we pray? Keep thy hand upon us, O God, that we may live in spiritual, mental, and physical health. Keep thy hand upon us, we pray, to lead and guide us in the way of all truth. In the Master's name, amen. Jesus a wonderful name. I like to say it just to enjoy it. Jesus. Jesus. But it's tragic to think that perhaps half the people in the world have never heard that sweet name, in spite of Billy Graham's many foreign evangelistic campaigns, in spite of the work of thousands of faithful missionaries, for it's the dearest, sweetest, most wonderful name on earth, or in heaven as far as that goes. I wonder how it will sound to hear the angels in heaven singing praises to our loving Savior. We'll find out one of these days, the good Lord willing, won't we? Doug, the Lord has done a great deal for you during this last year, too. Would you like to share a word of testimony with us? I'd like to, Dad, because the Lord's been extra good to me. You see, though I was brought up in the church and conformed, outwardly at least, to the Christian way of doing things, I never really surrendered my life completely to the Lord until a series of circumstances and then a real crisis put me on my knees. Why is it that it often takes a near tragedy to shake a person awake? I don't know. Well, anyhow, the bottom fell out of life for me. I was really down. I was having money troubles, family problems, but my chief difficulty was myself. I'd never really died out to self. A lot of fine people were praying for me. I knew that. One night as I drove my little VW between Middletown, Ohio and Anderson, Indiana, I was desperate for help. I was praying with an earnestness beyond anything I'd known in my life. I just gave everything over to God and I told him if he'd take me and help me, I'd serve him with all my heart for the rest of my days. Well, he did take me and things have been different ever since. Out of the love and the forgiveness I found that night, I wrote a little chorus that Dad and I are going to sing. It's titled, very simply, Jesus is His Name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is His Name. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. 
Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. How we praise him for his great and full salvation. I am so glad for what he's done for us. In the 118th Psalm, it says, The Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. Dear Lord, we magnify thy holy name and exalt thee as the fairest of heaven and earth. Help us to serve thee joyfully faithfully and fruitfully. In thy name we pray. Amen. since I wrote that little song. Doug and I'll sing it for you in a moment. Strangely enough, it was written in the home of my mother-in-law. It's good to have the kind of a mother-in-law who makes you want to sing, isn't it? Well, two verses of scripture had been going through my mind. One in John 12, 21 tells of certain Greeks who came to Philip saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. The other scripture is Matthew 17, 8, and took place immediately after the transfiguration of Christ. It reads, And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Well, somehow, out of these two verses came my own prayer, Let me see Jesus only, which I put to music. It's been sung around the world and in many languages. The chorus goes like this. Let me see Jesus only, Jesus only, Jesus only. Let me see Jesus only, only he can Now, I'm not much of a singer, but Doug has insisted that I sing that first verse for you. Well, I'll try. Dead to every worldly pleasure, dead indeed to sin am I, but alive to Christ my Savior. Daily to Him I'm drawing nigh. Let me see Jesus only, Jesus only, Jesus only. Let me see. To me, that song expresses a deep, heartfelt desire to see Jesus ahead of everything else in life. I want him to be much, much more than just another person among my circle of friends. He must be Lord of my life, Savior of my soul, my dearest friend, my constant companion. And he is all that and more. A thousand times while driving cross country, I've talked with this friend as if he were visibly present in the seat beside me. Well, he was there all right, even though I couldn't see him. I know, because I felt his presence. While driving from Chicago to Toledo on the turnpike one day, I said to this invisible friend, 
It's so good to have you along today on what otherwise might have been a very lonely journey. Thanks for the beauty of this day, for the sunshine, the blue sky, the fleecy white clouds, the glory of nature. And then I said, friend, I'm going to listen to you all the way to Toledo. I'm not going to talk, sing, whistle, or listen to the radio. I'm just going to sit here and listen to you. So, if you have anything you'd like to get across to me, I hope you'll say it because you never had a better chance. That was a wonderful trip with my friend that day. He went with me all the way to Toledo. In fact, he's been with me ever since. I love to talk to him and tell him how much he means to me. Thank him for his saving grace and his many blessings, his wise counsel, the steadiness of his guiding hand. I'm never alone anymore since he said to me, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That promise is for you too. It's found in Hebrews 13, 5. So as Herbert Thompson loves to sing, keep your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Dear Lord, don't let us be blinded or led astray by the bright lights and tinsel of the world. Help us to keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We ask in his name. Amen. Let me see Jesus only, Jesus only, Jesus only. Let me see Jesus only, only He can say.